You're probably wondering why I'm sitting out here wearing this. Well, as you probably know, it's Shark Week. That special time of year where we all get together and bear witness to God's perfect killing machines. All except for me. Yeah, I'll be honest, I never really got into Shark Week. I usually gotta be in the right mood to watch documentary-style TV. It's something I can't really schedule my enjoyment of for a specific time of year, nor something I can hope to stretch my enjoyment of for an entire week. Very recently, though, I've had a bit of a change of heart to the whole thing. Actually, that's an understatement. You see, I won in. And I've got the perfect pitch to give the Discovery Channel for this year's Shark Week. Picture this, a series following me as the world's first shark man, a human fully assimilated with sharks. I and I alone will have an understanding of their ways, their language, their culture, enabling me as the bridge between shark kind and human kind. I call it the Shark Man, man who is a shark. That's what I'm hoping for anyway. You see, there's just one problem with my pitch. I don't know how to be a shark. And believe me, I've been peering through every bit of shark-related media I remember growing up in the hopes of getting into the minds of these things. And yet, it was all to no avail. I suppose I could just read a book, but who wants to do that? I'm not a nerd. No. Clearly, if I was gonna learn how to be a shark, I was gonna have to go down a route I'm familiar with. And what better route than video games? That's why I went ahead and sought out four shark-related games that I could play here today. Now to be clear, I'm not just playing any games that happen to have sharks in them. I'm looking specifically at games where you play as a shark. If I want to get into the heads of these things, then I need to be the one in the water. I'm not going to be getting anything out of being the one with the fishing rod. By playing these games, then I'll know everything I need to to become the shark man for this year's Shark Week. Yeah, I know we're already halfway through, but I'm sure we can get it done if we fast track it. I guess that doesn't really explain what I'm doing sitting here. Honestly, this is just something I'm trying in the meantime. I don't know, maybe it'll trigger some primal instinct before my games get here. Speaking of... You Dylan? Yeah? Sign here. Where do you want it? Just drop it in, I have a whole thing I'm doing. Alright. Well, see ya. Godspeed. So let's take a look at some shark games. Up first on the list, we have Jaws Unleashed. Now let me start off by saying that Jaws the Movie is one of my favorite films of all time. Like, top five in my book. I was maybe 13 or 14 when I first saw it, and at a time when Marvel cheese pretty much set my standards for everything, I honestly wasn't expecting to like it. Boy, was I glad to be wrong. It is a masterpiece in my eyes, and while I'm pretty sure this game isn't meant to be a direct adaptation of the film, it being called Jaws does tell me that fans of the film should get a kick out of it. So I'm hoping to see if it does exactly that. As we start the game up, we're introduced to the famous Amity Island. Its residents are doing a bunch of shady shit in the water, and that makes one particularly big fish rather unhappy. Finally, we're dropped into the water where we're free to... I'm not too sure about this. Okay, so on the face of it, Jaws Unleashed is a pretty standard 3D swimmer. You hold down one button to swim, and you steer yourself with the left stick. Now to tell you the truth, I've never really been one for 3D swimming controls like this. To which again, I must say I'm hoping that wearing this might trigger something. But even with that in mind, something doesn't feel right. It may not look like it, but Jaws moves way too fast. Too fast not to overshoot yourself past some random enemy every five minutes. Or not to ram or wedge yourself into something whenever you're in a tight corridor. This problem ties into the fact that you can only aim Jaws while moving. You could try your luck at tediously tapping the forward swimming button, but some sections of the game almost require you to keep moving so as not to let things attack you. No matter what, there are many times in this game you'll have to be able to aim yourself faster than you can swim. Now granted, they did include a lock-on button for enemies and prey, but it barely turns Jaws in that direction. You still have to put some elbow grease into it, which, unless you have amazing depth perception, you might be better off trying to center onto things yourself. You at least have the benefit of knowing when things are directly in front of you camera-wise. Now while we're still on the topic of aiming while moving, Jaws' turn is way too wide. Again, it may not look like it, but whenever you overshoot anything here, it is an ordeal to reorient. 
yourself. Especially if you're dealing with a moving target. All of this isn't to say that Jaws Unleashed is impossible to play. I just think the learning curve for these controls is way too high. Now, as frustrating as these controls are, they're no deal-breaker by any means. If you're willing to put up with them, then Jaws Unleashed is actually pretty fun. There is still a visceral satisfaction that comes from destroying everything in your path, even if you might end up rubbing against it first. Chomping down on swimmers, sinking boats, wrecking public property, it's the exact carnage you'd want out of a game like this. As Jaws, you're going around Amity Island trying to ruin the residents' operations to drive them out all the while keeping a hunger meter full so as not to starve. Every stage in this game has you destroy some giant machine or landmark that disturbs the local waters. And said destruction is glorious. Yeah, it doesn't really bode well with the more grounded, realistic tone of the movie, but let's be honest, how are you gonna make a game out of Quentin Hooper bickering? Maybe put him in Mortal Kombat? Speaking of the movie, though, something seems off. As I explore these waters, I start to notice something. This isn't Amity Island. These oil rigs, this sunken sub, this giant sea world type of place? This isn't the Amity Island from the movie. And I know this game isn't supposed to be an actual recreation of the movie, but it does still seem to be taking a lot from it. The iconic music, the story of a greedy mayor putting people in harm's way? Hell, they even keep the name Brody for one of the characters here. Granted, he's not a cop in this game, this time he's a marine biologist, so I guess he's supposed to stand in for Hooper, but he's still on the warpath to warn the mayor about what he's doing. Clearly, this game wants you to remember the movie. Or book, but who gives a shit? So I feel the need to point out the inaccuracy of this game's setting. Now you might be wondering, how do I know this isn't Amity Island? How do I know this map is inaccurate? How do I know all of this stuff wasn't just off-screen in the movie? How the hell do I know what I'm talking about? Because I live there. In conclusion, this game is a pain in the ass, but it's an entertaining pain in the ass. Okay, so I couldn't figure out how to screen capture this kind of footage in time, so... Yeah, you're just gonna have to put up with that for the next few minutes. Anyway, how fitting to follow up one Jaws game with another, here we have Jaws Ultimate Predator for the 3DS. Now technically this game was on the Wii first, but I wanted to play the 3DS version for this video because, believe it or not, this is the first game I put in when I got a 3DS. And you know something? I wish it wasn't. The best way to describe Jaws Ultimate Predator is as a stripped-back and neutered version of Jaws Unleashed. On the face of it, it's not actually that different from Jaws Unleashed. In Jaws Ultimate Predator, you once again play as the title shark terrorizing the waters of Amity Island. To which credit where credit's due, they got the map right. It's also a 3D game where you hone in on enemies and sink the occasional boat. It controls the same way too, the only real difference being that you don't hold down any button to swim just does that automatically. I mean, I've already ranted about the controls in Jaws Unleashed, so you could probably discern I'm not a fan of them here, but Jaws Ultimate Predator surely can't be that much worse with how similar they are, can it? Yes, it absolutely can. Now, I should preface this by saying that due to time and because I'm playing several games for this video, I couldn't play each of them from start to finish. And the two games I had the least amount of time to play was this and Jaws Unleashed. Because of this, I am heavily relying on my first impressions carrying over for them. As first impressions go, however, the difference between this and Jaws Unleashed is night and day. Jaws Unleashed, as ass-backwards as its controls are, was crazy. It was over the top. You weren't just simply snacking on swimmers and ramming boats. You were breaking out of SeaWorld. You were throwing barrels into pipelines. You were fighting a giant octopus. It goes above and beyond, giving you a truly insane and unforgettable experience. Jaws Ultimate Predator, on the other hand, might be the most standard, low-effort shark game that a studio could ever shit out. Apart from this one barrel dodging segment, all this game is is kill X number of people, sink X number of boats, and then rinse and repeat for each level. Now, am I being too hasty with this assessment? I mean, after all, this is pretty much my first impression of the game. Perhaps it introduces some new stuff later on. For all I know, Cthulhu might be the final boss. And you know what? I probably shouldn't be going about this game like this. Hell, I was only a few levels in before I stopped playing. That's how first my impressions are. Clearly, I'm not giving Jaws Ultimate Predator the time it needs. Too bad I can't. Yeah, remember how I said me playing so little of these two games was due to time? Well, that's only half true. 
I tried to keep playing Jaws Ultimate Predator, but I literally couldn't. Five levels in, I for the life of me could not figure out how to sink these boats. Up until this point, sinking boats was just a simple matter of ramming into them. But for these ones, ramming them, biting them, doing some flippy floppy bullshit underwater, seeing if I could pick something up off the ocean floor, none of it works. You might be wondering why I don't just use a guide. Yeah, a guide for Jaws Ultimate Predator on the 3DS. This game is pretty much non-existent online. Most Let's Plays of it are only of the first 10 minutes, and if you search for Jaws Ultimate Predator 3DS on YouTube, half of what you'll get are videos of the Wii game. As far as I can tell too, the 3DS game isn't just a port of the Wii game. It's a completely different Jaws game that just happens to share the same name. So I can't really look at videos of the Wii version to get through what I have here. On the real though, even if I could, am I really gonna find some unsung masterpiece after this level? You cannot convince me this isn't shovelware. Some low effort product they lazily slapped the Jaws name onto. You've probably caught on to the amount of lag this game bombards you with, which for the 3DS is just unacceptable. If a developer can't be bothered to fix a simple frame rate issue on a system that could run countless 3D titles just fine, then why should I believe they cared about making a fun, functional game beyond that? As far as I'm concerned, this was a shitty game when I started playing it and will continue to be a shitty game if I keep playing it. Jaws Ultimate Predator is the worst 3DS game I've ever played and quite frankly, my arms are getting tired. Up next on the list, we have Hungry Shark Eva- Holy shit, yes! Now for a bit of historical context, Hungry Shark started off as a series of mobile games from 2010 to 2011. I was thinking about checking these earlier games out, but even if I had the time to, they don't seem to exist on any online store anymore. Although if this footage I found is anything to go by, then... yeah. Hungry Shark Evolution though? Godsend. This game also started off as a mobile game, but has since then been made available on platforms like the PC, which, for convenience, I decided to record footage of today. Pretending for a second I did play it on mobile, however, I would go as far to say it is the greatest mobile game of all time. Subway Surfers, more like Subway Suckers. Angry Birds, I'm angry you have the gall to compare them. Badland? Close second. Hungry Shark Evolution is an arcade endurance game that drops you into a giant cove to feast to your heart's content. More than your heart's content, actually, because your health is constantly draining and the only way to keep it filled is by eating. On the face of it, Hungry Shark Evolution might just sound like a simple high score game. Eat as much as possible as long as possible before starvation takes you. Although if you're just gonna play it like that, then you're not gonna get much out of it. There are fish everywhere in this game. If all you care about is eating, then the only thing that's gonna ruin your run is getting bored. No, what Hungry Shark Evolution is really about is this. You see, there's an entire arsenal of different shark species for you to unlock as you play. Either by eating or by doing a list of challenges on the side, you steadily level up your current shark. Whenever you reach level 10, you unlock the next shark in the line. That is to say, the option to purchase it with coins you accumulate while playing. Every new shark you unlock is either faster, stronger, has more health, basically anything that allows you to face a bunch of stuff you couldn't swimming around the map before. Submarines, other sharks, deep sea water pressure, and you know, speaking of swimming around the map, this game can get batshit crazy at times. Allow me to list off a few things you'll come across in this game. A giant fan that blows you out of the water. Sea monsters with fire and ice powers. Portals that transport you across space and time. A giant crab god. And that's just the code. Remember those coins I mentioned you accumulate? Well, you can also use them to buy bonus companions, gadgets, apparel, each of which enhance a unique game mechanic or stat. It can also make you look crazier than what I'm able to show here because, again, I need to get this video out on time. All of this makes for a game whose craziness gives Jaws Unleashed a run for its money. And you know what? The fun doesn't stop there because there's also Hungry Shark World. It's everything great about evolution, but now with even more companions, gadgets, apparel, and best of all, a new set of maps to explore and find a whole bunch of bizarre shit around. Most of which I can show because I still have all of the save data from before making this video. Ultimately, it isn't that different from evolution. The overall goal is still just getting more and more sharks, but honestly, what's wrong with more of something that's already great? Now while I'm still on the topic of these two games, there's one key difference from the Jaws games that I played that I think works to these games' advantage. And you've more than probably caught on to the fact that this game is 2D as opposed to 3D. However, what I'm really getting at is how this game controls compared to before. As opposed to slowly steering yourself around every time you overshoot an enemy or prey, Hungry Shark's controls are just a simple matter of pointing the joystick in the direction you want your shark to go. 
There's no carefully positioning yourself for downtime if you accidentally swim past anything here. It also helps that your default swimming speed isn't overshootingly fast, and even if you are pressing down on the boost button, enemies and prey either exist in big clusters or are just big enough on their own to be hard to swim past anyway. Now I want to make it clear real quick that the controls being a lot simpler doesn't mean that Hungry Shark is just a dumbed-down version of something like Jaws Unleashed. This isn't just carelessly waving the joystick back and forth while letting everything swim in your mouth. You do still need to pay attention to where you're going as there are plenty of hazards around the map that'll drain your health faster than starvation can. With boosting as well, you don't want to overdo it because you might swim into a bomb that suddenly appears on screen. You do still need to be careful with these controls. They're just more reliable than what I went over before. Overall, the Hungry Shark games are fantastic and I cannot recommend them enough. The last game on the list for today is Maneater. You know, I actually remember being kind of excited for this game to come out. I already raved about Hungry Shark with its ensemble of weird shit to find and countless insane upgrades for your shark. And when I first saw the trailer for this, I immediately thought to myself, 3D Hungry Shark. I mean, doesn't it kind of look like that? An open underwater world with strange landmarks to find as well as ultra powerful upgrades the more you progress. I was looking forward to checking this game out, although when I started noticing the mixed reception it was getting, I decided to put it on the back burner for myself, maybe wait for it to go on sale or something. When I eventually did pick it up, I'll be honest, I didn't really like it. The quests were boring, the leveling up was slow, the starting area was confusing and really ugly. I just wasn't getting into this game. However, when I decided to make this video, I saw an opportunity to replay it and see if my thoughts have changed at all. So how do I feel about Maneater now? It's pretty good. In Maneater, you play a growing shark on a mission to track down and kill a hunter known as Scaly Pete. You see, at the beginning of the game, Pete captured your mother and cut you out of her while you were still in the womb. He sets you free so as to let you face him as a full-grown shark, but not before you bite his arm off. You never want to turn off the girl. Just a flesh wound. From there, you're left alone to wreak havoc in the local waters until you're ready to get your revenge. Now let me start off by explaining why I didn't really like this game at first. You see, the overall goal here is to get enough XP to level up, which in the context of the game is you getting older. The older you get, the further you progress through the story and the more regions of the map you unlock. The problem I was having though is that you're presented with a lot of missions that, while ideally should provide you with enough XP to progress, were just not yielding what I needed from them. It also doesn't help that some of those missions really test your patience for what they expect of you. Some of them are simple, like hunting a certain number of prey in a specific area, but then you have stuff like collectibles that force you to swim aimlessly around the map or special enemies that are levels above you, to where you just end up constantly going to and away from them to eat some health replenishing fish. What was especially pissing me off is that whenever I did manage to level up, I couldn't get any of those evolutions that were so heavily pushed in the game's advertising. The only ones I did manage to get were more so just given to me at the beginning to introduce me to the upgrade menu. Other than that though, I would just spend hours swimming around staying exactly the same. I was almost ready to pull another Jaws Ultimate Predator and cut this review short. But then I discovered something important. You see, these missions aren't the only thing you're supposed to do in this game. If you want to level up, you're also expected to hunt at your own leisure. Now of course hunting for smaller prey isn't going to yield a lot of XP and, while you can try searching for larger, more dangerous creatures swimming around, who you really want to be feasting on most of the time are good old fashioned human beings. Unlike most other targets in this game, attacking humans has a very specific outcome. The more people you eat in one go, the more you become an active threat, prompting hunters to come in and take you out. These hunters aren't exactly the strongest enemies in the game, but they come in big enough numbers to be a legit threat if you're not on your feet. Tail. More importantly though, those numbers mean an endless buffet of XP if you can endure them for long enough. So that solves the slow XP problem, but what about unlocking new evolutions like the advertising promised? Well, should you endure hunters long enough, you'll eventually get the attention of special hunters. Eat them and you unlock those evolutionary upgrades. As soon as I started playing this way, things started going by a whole lot faster. Fast enough to finish the game in time for this video to get out? Well, maybe not, but either way, I am pretty glad I made this video if it meant having a better outlook towards this game. Now, with this being the last 3D game on the list, I only think it makes sense to bring up how this game controls. Unlike Unleashed or Ultimate Predator, which have you steer your shark, Maneater's controls are much more like Hungry Sharks in that, once again, it's just a simple matter of pointing the joystick. Again, controlling the shark this way is just way less tedious. 
I already talked about the frustratingly wide controls that plague the Jaws games, and when you compare it to the snappy, tight controls of turning the shark here, the difference is night and day. Yeah, there were times I overshot and lost track of what was around me, so I guess I'm just not really the best with any sort of 3D swimming controls, but hey, it's still better than what we got before regardless. So overall, Man Eater is a pretty good game, much better than I originally gave it credit for. And with that, those are four shark games that I could play in time for this year's Shark Week. Some are great, some are terrible, some are alright, but regardless of quality, I think all of these games did at least one thing to put me in the right mindset to become the Shark Man. And now that I'm finished with them all, it's time to see what I can do.